So the final mas'ala is about a person who, a person is able to stand and perform salah, but he cannot sit. He cannot sit. So the fuqaha mentioned this mas'ala, generally their examples would be somebody who most of his body or the bottom half of his body would be in mud or in water, which would allow him to perform the salah standing to an extent, but sajda will not happen because then his face would be, his face would be in the mud or, or in the water. And they also mentioned somebody who, somebody who's tied up or shackled generally. So anyone who is able to stand and perform salah but cannot sit, this mas'ala, what we explain applies to that person. So if somebody has pain, for example, or has an injury, that they can stand, but they can't sit, or they can't bend their leg to sit, then this mas'ala, this mas'ala would apply, would apply to them. So the ulama say in this situation, a person prays the salah as normal. So his standing would obviously be as normal. And then, and then he'd perform ruku as normal because he's capable, he's capable of performing ruku as normal. And then for sajda, for sajda, then in this case, he'd all, he'd bend for sajda, indicating for sajda, going a bit lower than, going a bit lower than ruku if it's possible, if it's possible. So if the water is a bit high or a person cannot bend for some other reason, to be able to make the sajda a bit lower than the ruku then that's fine, then that's fine. If they are, if he is only able to make them equal without differentiating, that's his max for both, then that's fine. Otherwise, ruku is a bit lower, ruku is a bit lower as long as it hits the minimum ruku that I'm going to mention just now. And then the sajda, and then the sajda is a bit lower, that will be fine. So basically for ruku, you're going to go, you're going to be going to ruku as normal. And for ruku, the elbows are not bent. The elbows are not bent. So it's not going to be like that kind of ruku. Because then sajda lower, it's going to be a bit difficult. So then, so ruku is going to be like this, right? Obviously back is flat. And then for sajda, for sajda, you're going to be going a bit lower. That is, that is if it's possible for a person to bend lower. And if a person is not able to bend lower, then he bends for ruku as much as possible, and then and then sajda, sajda just a bit more. So when you go into sajda, when you go into sajda, as we said, that the indicating indicating is with the back and the neck most of the time, or just the neck according to some of the ulama. So when it's with the back and the neck, that means that the hands are not indicating as well. So where would the hands be? So for sajda, they say he goes lower than his ruku, of course he's intending sajda and his hands then be on, they're on the side, they're on the side. So the hands, the hands would be on the side, basically, they would be on the side. They don't have a specific place, so it would not be wrong to do it like this if a person wants to, but on the side preferably, as some of the fuqaha mentioned. The Maliki scholars, they question whether he does his hands with him to indicate with the, with the head and the face. So there's two opinions there. Most of the ulama, as I said, the indication does not include the hands. The indication does not include the hands. So they, in that case, you'd basically be going like this, lower than your ruku, lower than your ruku. Minimum ruku is for a person who has average size arms. The palms would reach his knees. The palms would reach his knees. So he has to bend that amount for minimum ruku. A person who's capable to bend that much when standing, and he doesn't. Less than that, his ruku doesn't, doesn't count. His ruku doesn't count. The same principle would apply if a person is trying to catch the imam. And the imam is standing up and the person is going down. If he's closer to ruku, or he's done the minimum ruku, bent the minimum ruku, even if his hands are there, for example. It would count as if he caught the imam before the imam got up. But if he was like this, for example, if he was like this, so now he's closer to standing and my palms can't reach my knees, my fingers reach my knees. In this case, he would have not caught the imam. In this case, he would not have caught the imam. So basically, to fulfill the sajda, a person should bend down lower, lower than he'd bend for ruku. So we said the ruku, minimum ruku, the ma maximum ruku is to do the full, full sunnah. He places his palms on his knees, grasping it like this, and his back and his head straight. His back and his head straight. That would be the full ruku. So lower than that, lower than that, lower than that would be Lower than that would be the sajda. Lower than that would be a sajda that a person performs in a case where he cannot perform sajda on the ground because of some reason there, and he, he can he cannot sit either, and he cannot sit either. So that's how we perform salah. That's how so that's for that's for rukur and sajda. After rukur, he'd come up as normal, and then sajda he'd perform sajda is normal. And when he has to sit, when he has to sit, then obviously he can't sit because the floor is dirty with mud or water, or he's not able to sit because of an injury or pain or whatever it may be. In that case, he'd stand and he'd intend the stand. He'd intend that he's sitting, but he'd be standing. And then he, after his second sajda in the second rak'ah, when he has to sit now for tashahud, then in that case, he'll also stand, he'll also stand and, and he'd intend to be sitting. His hands will be, uh, can be close to wherever he can put them on his thighs, and then he can perform the, recite the tashahud and point for the shahada and finish his salah like that. 
if it happened to be that the person, because of him being injured, pain, or tiredness, he cannot stand, and we said standing or leaning, uh, with those steps we mentioned just now, then a person can, if he, because the next step after standing, if a person cannot stand, he sits, but sitting is not possible here, and um, in, a, in a case where a person is injured, so not in water or mud, so he's got the option to lie down on something, then in that case, he can go to lying down. Or even if he cannot stand for the full salah, even if he cannot stand for the full salah, so he stands for whatever is capable of the opening takbir, however many verses of Surah Al-Fatiha or Surah Al-Fatiha, and then he's not able to stand anymore. In that case, then instead of sitting, which would be the second option under normal circumstances, then he'd go to, he'd go to lying down, lying down on his back or either of his sides, according to how we mention in the next mas'ala, where we speak on the salah on the side, where we mention which side is better and what to do with regards to facing the qibla and which one takes preferences, which one takes preference if, you, if the qibla is in a different direction to what we describe as being the better side to face, the better side according to the categories we mentioned to face when a person is lying on his sides. So that's what a person does, that's what a person does in this situation.